This is the Brian No Show. Oh, look at this guy. On NBC Sports Northwest, 620 Rip City Radio. All right, please welcome in Kenny Wheaton, former Ducks defensive back, joining us here on the Brian No Show. Of course, the most famous play in Ducks history, the pick six against Washington. So he uh, is joining us as we're ramping up, hopefully, to the Washington-Oregon game. We'll get to that. We don't know if it's going to take place due to COVID. But I don't want to talk ball at the beginning here, Kenny. I want to welcome you in and say, what a festive background, huh? You got the stockings up. Are you a big Christmas guy? Uh, I, I am. I'm a, I'm a huge Christmas guy, but, you know, I end up marrying a woman that's more of a Christmas person than anyone. My wife, this is all her. I have nothing to do with this. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. I love Christmas, too. Is it your favorite holiday, or do you go with something else? Uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving is right there together because, I mean, I love to eat. So Thanksgiving for me is about sitting down with family and really eating. So both of them, it's like 1A and 1B. Now I have to ask. I have to. Um, We had this conversation with Thanksgiving. There are a lot of anti-turkey people. Are you anti-turkey? No, I love me some turkey. Yeah, you know, it, it's not Thanksgiving if I don't have any turkey. I mean, let's just put it like that. This is my opinion. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you too, man. There are so many vocal anti-turkey people these days. I don't understand them. No, not me. I I, I want my turkey. Yeah. The night before. <laughs> yeah. So, and yeah. you're over there in the the Dallas area. You've been there for almost two decades now. How do you like sure. it there? I like it. I mean, it's uh. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, but uh, Texas has been home for a long time now. So uh, it's a nice, you know, I'm I'm comfortable. You know, my, my wife, my kids, they enjoy it. So uh, I'm good with it. And you grew up, I didn't know this about you, you grew up a Cowboys fan. Of course, yes. you played there, and yes. now you live there with, uh, are you a crazy Cowboy fan yourself? Or are you one of these guys? No, you're more reasonable than them. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm very reasonable. I'm I'm not one of these you know crazy cowboy fans. There's a lot of those out there. You know, I would I would I would put my mother-in-law in that category also. She's one of those crazy cowboy fans. But uh, no, I'm not. I I am a cowboy fan. I would like to see him win, but I'm realistic. You know, so no, I'm not to that extreme. You know, I was just talking about this. I'm curious what you think. Jerry Jones was just on the radio there. And was okay. talking about Dak and avoiding punishment if he's running the football. And anything Jerry says, it's going to turn into a big deal. Some people have an issue with it because he's hurt right now, and he's talking about that. What's your take on Jerry talking about Dak Prescott and you know not taking punishment if he's going to run the football? Well, I mean, Jerry, he's entitled to his own opinion, like the rest of us. You know, that's the way I look at it. You know, he's, you know, he's CEO of the team, so. You know, he's going to voice his, his opinion and give his take. I don't, you know, it's football. You know, that didn't go out there to get hurt. You know, no one goes out there open or, you know, thinking they're going to get hurt. Uh, I think that's impossible to run the ball and expect not to get hit. You know, and when get hit, there's a chance of injury. You know, mm-hmm. so it's football. You know, that, that has gotten tackled plenty of times. So uh, it just happens. He's Kenny Wheaton, former Ducks defensive back. I'm going to focus in on the Ducks momentarily, but I have to ask you, when you grow up a Cowboys fan, you get drafted by the Cowboys. You're a teammate of Deion Sanders and all these, like the who's who of, you know, the big three and all of that. What do you remember most from those days? Those guys, it was just, I mean, it was like recess every day for three years going to work. You know, they uh, they just love to have fun. And, you know, we had too much fun once I got there because we didn't win any games. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, the Super Bowl stuff was over, you know, before I got there. But, uh, no, I mean, great guys. You Nothing like you see from afar on TV. You know, those guys are just huge kids. Love to joke around, love to have fun, you know. Uh, so I enjoyed it. That's what I enjoyed. That's what I missed. It's just them being who they truly are, not the football Troy Aikman, the football Deion Sanders, but just, you know, just people just like you and I that just joke a lot. Were you like, don't be starstruck, don't be starstruck? (laughs) Did you have to give yourself a pep talk when you met him for the first time? No, I didn't because my mentality was different. Like, I did look forward to meeting Deion, but I've, I've never been a guy that's been, like, starstruck. Yeah. You know, for me, like I've always said, like I grew up in the home with my my hero, 
the guy that I wanted to be like with my big brother. So, you know, I was raised with him. So anyone else is, okay, you know, it's cool. But, no, I was – so I've never been one of those guys that's really starstruck by meeting anyone. Or no. Anything. Yeah, I'm similar to you. They're, they're just people, man. I don't get these people that are <laughs> crying after seeing their favorite yeah. performer in concert. It's like, I don't I don't get yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I okay, so the most famous play in Ducks history, right? The pick six against Washington. I mean, how do you feel about... When the game rolls around and it's the Ducks against Washington, and do you think about that play each year that the game rolls around? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I can't help but to if I try not to Facebook, Instagram, you know. I'm not a big Twitter guy, but Twitter, they will remind me, you know. So, But it's something that really, truly, I, the older I get, I cherish. You know, I used to get discouraged by it, but – uh you know, I think about it a lot. A lot of the kids that I train here in Dallas, you know, they once they meet me and work out, they'll Google me or YouTube me. And so they always going to remind me throughout the year about the pick and ask questions about it. It's I don't know how to ask this exactly. It's great that you have this signature moment. But is there a, a feeling that you're like, I did more than just that? Does that come up ever? It, it, it comes up a lot. You know, I don't I don't talk about it on platforms like this, but you can bet that, you know, my older brother, my my kids, my wife, a couple of people close to me, they know exactly how I feel about that. You know, uh, but I, I do. I, that's what I used to struggle with big time is that people think that, oh, he only made one play, you know, and I, you know, I kind of frown at it because, you know, for three years, I would like to say that. I mean, the film doesn't lie. I mean, I, I played ball. I was a three-year, all, you know, All-American three years. So you don't get that off of one play. So it used to be frustrating, but as an old guy now, I, I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you, man. It's, yeah. I, I would imagine during your playing days, would you think of it almost like, uh, say, a, a musician or an artist, where if they have this mega hit song, and they're known for that, where it's like, I've made other music. I've made yeah. other songs that are really good. Was it there ever that feeling? Oh, for years. You know, not just a short moment. It's for years. You know, I, I've always had that feeling because I say that Duck fans, Duck family that, let's say they came on late. Let's say if they jumped on in 2000. You know, if they never watch me, you know, they're going to assume that, okay, he's a, he's a one-play wonder. You know, he made one play, and that's not true. You know, I've always said, even back then, you know, that wasn't, to me, my my best play, you know, and it's still not. I've always viewed, you know, two other plays, you know, a little bit better than that. So, but, hey, it's like, you know, I'll take it. What are the two plays that you have uh -huh. in, in higher regard? The uh, That same year, the interception at USC, that uh, I got in the Coliseum. And then the next year, it was an interception uh, pick six with, uh, against Pacific. You know, and it was that, to me, like that play, probably the Pacific play, I like to say it describes me as a football player completely. You know, someone that played with instincts, you know, when it made the play. I was on the other side of the field, seeing things unfolding, made the play. Ran it back with the help of my other buddies on the field throwing blocks. So I love that play probably more than any play I've ever made in my life. I like it. He's Kenny Wheaton, former Ducks defensive back, joining us here on the Brian No Show. So the news today, Washington had to pause football activities because of COVID. Yeah. And so this game between Washington and Oregon, it's going to decide who wins the North. So if the game isn't played, what do they uh, do? Who goes to the title game? If the game isn't played, then the Ducks go to the title game. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know we're going. It, it, best thing to do is play it, but I understand if they can't. But if they can't play the game, then the Ducks, hey, you in the title game. Let's go represent. Makes sense easy, to me, right? Like Easy fix. Yeah. yeah. I, I hate it. Like I hate the whole COVID thing. But if Oregon is ready to play and the other team can't, I don't right. see why Oregon pays the price. I don't get that. Well, that's what I was going to say, because you said that Washington put a pause. You know, mm -hmm. the Huskies did, not the Ducks. So that be the case, 
if you can't play it, then hey, you know the W goes to us. Yeah. You know, keep going. What do you? Uh, what are your impressions of the Ducks this year? Uh, young. Uh, don't not making excuses. I don't make excuses. You know, even with my son, it's just that we need to play better. We need to play better. You know, offense, defense. You know, we got to get better. But I do see a lot of talent. You know, on the field. You know, but with that being said, it, you gotta you gotta play better. You gotta do better. So, you know, hopefully in time. This isn't an excuse, but I'm just curious. As a former player, what do you think it would be like? playing at this time with the pandemic and virtual most of the time no fans in the stands what would it be like not making excuses i'm just curious what is that dynamic like for you as a player i i, I can only imagine it's very weird especially for the guys who have been there now the incoming freshmen i mean i'm pretty sure it's, it's weird to them because they've always played with fans but to come out that tunnel and play an option or just be on the sideline it's I mean, it's a whole nother level. So to not have your fans there, you know, it has to be, you know, something that's very different and very strange. And it will affect you, I think, definitely on the defensive side because you look for the fans to pick you up, you know, to keep pushing you. So, uh, yeah, defensively, I, I, I know that has to be really, really strange to them. Absolutely. He's Kenny Wheaton, former Ducks defensive back. I'm going to go back to your pro days or even your college days as well. You're not a starstruck guy, but right. what player caused you to say, wow, either when you go, went against them on the field or you were a teammate, saw something in practice, you're on the sidelines, saw one of your own teammates do something. What was one of the wow moments for you seeing someone do something that you were just like, that's insane. Oh man. A lot of guys, uh, to be honest, I, I can't say one guy sticks out. Uh, when I was at Oregon, I was I was kind of wowed by the receiving core of Derek Detweiler, Kristen McLemore, Corey Murphy. A lot of people don't know, but Corey Murphy was he was special. You know, I got to Dallas, it was more Larry Allen to see someone mm -hmm. that big, really mm -hmm. truly that big, move the way he moved. You know, to uh, watch Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin work out before and after practice. That, it, that was a show to see how they was on the same page. You know, like that wowed me, you know, to see that on a regular basis. What is it like, and I can imagine, but I want to hear it from you. If a team runs a screen pass and you've got a Larry Allen-like lineman bearing down on you as a DB, what is that like to describe? Well, let's just say I almost came up on the short end of a play exactly how you just described my rookie year. They threw a screen, and it was it was more of an inside thing because everyone was laughing. They threw a screen to my side as a rookie. I come up, and Larry Allen is coming. I don't see him until it's too late, and he's full speed. Now, mind you, I don't think people understand. The guy is like a high 4'8", 40 guy, 300-plus pounds. And he did not slow down, but he run right by me. And everyone was like, oh, boo, boo, you know, like giving him a hard time. So he's a man of very few words. So he turned around and he walked up, put his arms around me, one arm, and he said, hey, you better be glad you're from the West Coast and I like you. So, <laughs> I, mean, but, I mean, I probably would have been out for the year had he hit me. I didn't see him. You know, yeah. so it was on the screenplay. I was playing corner. So, yeah, that's a scary sight. Wow, man. Props to Larry Allen for yes. keeping you upright. Yes. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He taught me something. Yeah. 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 Awesome stuff. Well, hey, Kenny, always appreciate your time, man. Happy holidays. You going to do anything special for Christmas? No, just be here. Be at home with the wife and two kids. You know, be here and open up gifts and enjoy. I've got a random question for you. Yeah. Where do you stand on eggnog? On eggnog? Yeah. I don't I don't drink it. I, I have my <laughs> own preferred drink there. <laughs> yeah, I, trust me, it's not eggnog. You know? So I, I'm not against it. I mean, to each his own, but that's not what I know. I, I, I personally think it's horrible branding. I thought it would taste like eggs. It tastes like icing. I actually like it. I tried it last year. I'm like, this is really good. They should change the name of it. It's a terrible name.
Oh, you like it? Oh, I've never, be honest with you, I've never, I've never tried it. You know, never had it, but I just don't think I would be a fan of it. Not in that way. Again, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I was just like you, Kenny, just yeah. because of the name. I'm like, I don't want to drink scrambled eggs. Sorry, I'm good. It doesn't taste like that at all. They should change it. If it was icing nog, everybody would right. be drinking. Right. That's basically what it is, man. I'm telling you. Now, what is the, uh, what's the holiday drink of choice for you? Well, we got kids, you know, watching. But, uh, I mean, for the adults, it's uh, tequila. Okay. Yeah, I like yeah. it, man. It's like happy holidays, a little tequila yeah. shot. I like it, man. Yeah. Well, hey, yeah. man, hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Thanks again for your Thank time, you. but hopefully we'll have Washington, Oregon, and you can enjoy that game. We'll see so. how that goes, man. We'll catch you down the road. And, uh, again, Kenny, thanks for the time, bud. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, there he is, Kenny Wheaton, former Ducks defensive back. Love it. Good stuff.